Welcome back for a second episode of Growing Swiss Chard from Seeds. It's day 33. So this set of plants is perky at night but droopy in direct sunlight during the day. The problem has been somewhat fixed by my first application of wild hill dirt, some clay loam at the bases to buttress the plants and also hopefully wash down there when I water from the top like I'm doing now and establish some connections with the roots. As I mentioned before, potting mix is made of very coarse um, organic matter, wood chips, bark chips, sphagnum peat moss. It's not anything like wild dirt, so by adding some wild dirt in there and watering from the top, hopefully uh, the fine particles of clay and silt get into there, and even sand, and those will rest directly on the roots and congeal with a potting mix to form some good connections to get some more nutrition in there but for now I'm just doing this squirt bottle watering because it's something I can do every other day to ameliorate the problem it's a bandage solution to apply some wild clay loam on top I know it would be easier just to transplant everything into pure dirt but I ran out of dirt I had very little left just a few ounces maybe to uh, help solve this problem of everything wilting every day. Um, so it wasn't a lot of dirt that I applied in episode one and by watering from the top a few times it, it helped clearly. Um, but you can see there's a little problem with the anchoring there. Some of these little ones are just looking like they're going to fall over and just be totally screwed up if I water too hard. So I'm adding some clay loam from the neighborhood hills from the same spot and the clay itself it has this reddish orange color but because there are some other things in there like silt and sand and uh, organic detritus it's heavily decomposed it carries more of a brown color which is good you don't want something that's purely clay or too high of a content in clay although clay is very very nutritious it's uh, in these flat little disc-like shapes on a microscopic level, whereas sand and silt are more uh, squarish or roundish, and they provide for better aeration, uh, more air space in between the particles. So clay has a lot of organic uh, value. It has a lot of macro and micronutrients that plants need. Uh, it retains a lot of those versus say sand which is just coarse uh, much bigger granules of rock so by watering um, top down like this maybe three times I hope to get a lot of this new clay loam down there and as you saw there were a lot of uh, plant roots from wild plants that had decayed over the years those are very brittle if you just put on fresh compost and have plants grow in that then that's not really a good thing because they give off uh, noxious gases. So it's day 35. Notice the immediate growth and increased turgor pressure from adding the dirt and some of that is due to me buttressing the plants to adjust for the phototropism. These were all leaning towards the balcony rail, towards where the sun was coming and by piling on more dirt and kind of trying to shove these more upright it's helped a fair amount. The cotyledons are growing and they're long and wavy. Uh, I would like to add more dirt actually, but I'm worried that this might not be a species of plant where you can just bury the bases of the stems and leaves continuously, especially in these cases. These are very underdeveloped. If I were to cover everything up, I don't know how it would react. Um, some plants will probably rot you'll rot away the shoot apical marrow stems and then everything will just die if you keep burying it in wet dirt but during the day everything looks really dry like this because it it really isn't that big of an amount of dirt even though it looked like I was shoveling it on um, this pot is still probably 95 percent potting mix so you can see a little bit of loss of turgor pressure in that uh, leaf to the left there close to the edge of the pot so things still aren't perfect. I'm looking to fix them. And as you can see, um, these are mostly red stemmed or red petioled. And then there's one that's not quite. We'll 
look at that in better detail as everything gets bigger but maybe I haven't watered deeply enough or maybe just not enough clay loam has washed down into there as you can see when I'm watering on the top the three small plants on the right side where it's sunnier and hence there are more water deprived early on looks like the leaves are drowning that's not good so it's day 37 looks like the problem is largely fixed um, as I said some of the tilt is due to phototropism so maybe with more clay loam I could fix that problem but if nothing is touching the ground then it's not really an issue it's obviously bad to have things wilting every day because that means the root system is not functioning correctly or there's not enough water in the soil and as you can see it's becoming more and more obvious that the petioles for this plant are white um, it's not as aesthetic but maybe as it gets bigger it'll be interesting to look at these are red like the other ones so on the packet the seed packet that I have there's also yellow and orange so there should be four colors at least and just by luck of the draw I got let's see is it five reds and one white so maybe if I had 20 plants or 30 plants, I'd have a few of each color. But that's just uh, the luck of the draw due to randomness. That's what I got. So it's day 39. And the wilting during the day is inconsequential now. Although you can still see there's an obvious tilt. I'm really tempted for this one to add in more clay loam. A fair number of pebbles in that wild dirt because uh, I did all that top-down watering and that got all the finer particles down there but all these pebbles remain on the surface I can just discard those and heap on some more dirt and this thing is doing a lot better now this spot hits gets hit by the sun the most probably and it hasn't done well for a long time likewise this spot gets a lot of sun too so because they're so small I can't really pile on the dirt so it's the the opposite of a virtuous cycle it's just because I can't do this due to that condition then it's doing worse than these bigger plants and so on like for this plant I could pile on a lot more dirt now I have a, a bag with maybe 30 pounds of backup dirt in there so in the future I won't be using potting mix uh, we just saw two small pots full of wild clay loam. That's probably what I'm going to go with. And in the meantime, all I can do is just keep showering like this. And once everything gets a critical mass, like I think the f three biggest plants are doing, that one and these two, then definitely I could solve the problem by heaping on more dirt eventually and just keep watering and watering and also I think potting mix can work for some plants but only when their root systems are very established in 2016 2017 last two years my problem was basically my plants were getting off to such a slow start because of what I described um, so it's day 43 there's still some wilting during the afternoon maybe I just need to water a lot more so that's what I'm doing right now so the potting mix is composed of these uh, large particles of compost, mostly bark and wood, sphagnum peat moss and things like that. So there's not a lot of fine particles. Um, but yeah, when you get seeds trying to germinate, the tap root that comes out isn't in contact with a lot of stuff. I mean, it, it's surrounded by really humid, sopping wet potting mix, but it can't absorb a lot of water and nutrients and that's why the growth is so stunted until the plants send out roots in all directions or uh, say a tap root to directly drink water from the watering tray in the bottom so it's day 46 it's only been three days but I can already tell that I won't need to be watering every other day like I did in the past anymore there's enough turgor pressure the leaves could be a lot darker green and smoother instead of being so ruffled and curly on the edges but I think that's just a, a consequence of daily dehydration during the day 
and uh, inadequate root system to get all the water and nutrients that these plants need uh, due to the poor nature of potting mix as a growing medium. But I think by adding two waves of dirt, clay loam, the problem has been amended and going forward if I were to add yet more clay loam to buttress the bases of these petioles and the stems that would fix the problem even more and I could also fertilize by adding a banana peel smoothie on top but I think there's a, a clock here because I don't intend for this plant series to run for that long it said on the seed packet 60 days until harvest so that's just another two weeks and then I'll be cutting some leaves off to eat hopefully if they're big enough and also the banana peel smoothie would wet the stems or um, might cause some rot if they came into contact with these very low-lying uh, shoot apical marrow stems and that are somewhere down in there so I don't want to bury where all the leaves are coming from because I'm not sure what that would do to Swiss chard and I think it's a safer play just to get to a harvest and start eating the leaves and on my future plant growing series I can get things right right from the get-go by using uh, this clay loam wild dirt and no potting mix at all I think that would work a lot better so I think we're on our way to a harvest and probably by the end of the next episode you'll see me eating some leaves if not the fourth episode